These are interesting times as technology and innovation are changing the norms of business as we know it. My guest on the show has been at the forefront of helping develop the technology ecosystem across Africa and he joins me to share his thoughts on the journey so far plus how Nigeria can make the most of this momentum. Our tech tips is on how to make your phone battery last longer. There is indeed a lot lined up for you. But first, some tech news and updates. This is Tech Trends. I'm Chukameka Asbata. Millennials, tech and global savvy will make them instrumental in shaping our mobile future worldwide. David Okwatomibo is a young Nigerian drone engineer and enthusiast. His journey started with paper planes, cartons, foams and cans to build static models. As time went on, he evolved and got access to electronics and could make drones that were able to fly. I started when I was a little bit smaller. As a kid, I was fascinated with the flight of birds. And that led me to start researching about, okay, what makes birds fly? So due to my research, I got to know about airplanes and also got to know about what we call drones or mandarin vehicles. So I, I was interested in that and I started doing my study about them. That's how the journey began. David, who is also an aviation student at the International College of Aeronautics, says his parents were not receptive at first, but they turned around. Well, at first it was strange, it was alien, because you're like, ah, I say you want to build an airplane now that is going to fly a small one and the rest. But along the line, they got used to me building stuff together and they were very, very supportive. <laughs> Having a friendly environment to experiment and improve on one skill is key. Does Nigeria provide such atmosphere for development? I would say in some aspects yes and in some aspects no. Um, one of the things is many of these parts are not manufactured in the country as of present. So we have to import other parts into the country. And as of present now we are facing a lot of problems in that the Nigerian customs are seizing parts and that is inhibiting you know, development and research. For we innovators. It wasn't exactly a smooth sail for David. What were the hiccups he encountered? Well, one of the very first challenges is finance. Uh, many of these drone components are expensive, and because they are not sourced locally, the conversion rates of the currency and many other stuff pose a very, very big challenge in getting all those parts. And aside, from, yeah, you no. Know, so when the parts also get damaged, we need more time to get them shipped back to the shipped to me and stuff like that. While controlling a drone is relatively safe, it does have little hazards. One of the things is those blades spin at a very, very fast RPM, revolution per minute, and getting in contact with those rotating parts can cause a lot of damage. Aside from that, the batteries used by these drones are actually very, very volatile. They must not get scratched or burned or punctured. If not, you can have explosions. The drone engineer hopes that more can be done to make the journey easy for innovators and also boost the space. I'm appealing to the government to recognize the innovators, the indigenous innovators, individuals and organizations and provide waivers for them so that they will have access to get all these components needed for their research and product development for, of drone technology. David plans to manufacture drones for end users who might want to use it for their business or personal needs. A Texas company aims to sell short recreational flights later this year in a one-seater electric aircraft in a design that can be controlled by a joystick without requiring a pilot's license. It is one of the startups vying with aerospace giants to develop electric, vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts, which typically have multiple spinning rotors to produce lift. Many models resemble unnamed aerial drones, only much larger and with seats for passengers. 
Lyft aircrafts may end up being the first to sell pleasure rides in such a vehicle, in part because it says the aircraft is light enough to be considered an ultralight vehicle by the Federal Aviation Authority. It has no relationship to the ride-sharing app's Lyft. Ultralight vehicles, a category that includes hang gliders, can be flown by someone without a license under FAA rules. Lyft says its 18-rotor Hexa aircraft weighs around 426 pounds, including floats to allow it to bob on water and a parachute for emergencies. All told, Lyft says the FAA has violated the company's interpretation of the ultralight regulations for the Hexa. So with Lyft aircraft, we really envision a future where anyone can fly. And so right now, the FAA isn't certifying electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft quite yet, uh, but they are available for recreation and sport use under the FAA's ultralight classification. So we want to get started. We want people to fly. Uh, we're building a safe, reliable aircraft that meets this ultralight classification. Uh, and we're going to get started letting people uh, fly for recreation and sport. Instead of having four rotors, which would be really efficient, they have 18 rotors, which is really redundant and much safer. And so it takes a hit on kind of like long range flight endurance and things like that, but it's got a full blown ballistic parachute system that it's carrying. It can lose up to six of its rotors and still fly. It's got floats, so if it has to make an emergency landing on water, it just sits there and floats. So there's so many redundancies and safety factors built in because we know, you know, and Lyft Aircraft knows, they're gonna be some of the first people out there putting public in these aircrafts to fly around. And so everything has been engineered around safety and reliability, redundancy, down to the autopilot that has a, a radar on the ground that's even looking for flocks of birds that might be flying into the area. Chasen is planning to sell rides near cities around the United States later this year. Customers would first spend time learning the controls in a simulator before climbing into a hexa to fly up for 15 minutes, the maximum amount of time that can be safely allowed by the batteries. The aircraft can fly at speeds of up to 63 miles per hour, the maximum allowed for ultralight aircraft under FAA rules. Depending on the time scale that you're looking at, no, 10 to 20 years is we'll all be we'll all be using these things. You know, it'll be in our lifetimes. And you know, I think that, you know, especially when you look at that time horizon, you're going to see a lot of these things flying around. They're going to be fully autonomous. They're going to have full awareness of where each other are. You know, we truly are on the cusp of a revolution in aviation, and it's being brought about by the electrification um, of, of aircraft, uh, much like electric cars are going to be the future of Driving, uh, electric aircraft are going to be the future of flying. An onboard computer system similar to the geofencing technology used in aerial drones will prevent the aircraft from flying outside a prescribed area over open land or water and will allow for remote control from the ground. And should a need arise, engineers will be able to take over the aircraft from land. The FAA bans ultralight aircraft from flying over built up areas and they can only be used for sport or recreation meaning they are not viable as a form of commuter transit. It, it, will be, it will be impactful. It's going to be like the Jetsons. I think people will start building homes with landing pads on top for their, for their VTOLs, for sure. An artificial intelligence park full of interactive experience devices has attracted visitors at the 2019 China Internet Conference, which opened in Beijing. A series of fun and advanced technologies and products, including AI fitting room, 
virtual guitarist, and 3D printed chocolate are on display. The internet inspires wisdom, and wisdom brings changes to our life. The future world is bound to see highly intensive interactions between humans and things in harmonious coexistence. There is more space for imagination in our wisdom. Another focal point of the conference is the security issue cropping up in the rapid development of science and technology. Many exhibitors put up their services and products related to cybersecurity, which highlight the protection of people's privacy. With the development of internet, our big data technologies are also developing, apparently with new methods guarding against cyber crimes, which provide the society with tremendous application in internet security. The three-day conference featured 30 thematic forums on 5G, Internet Protocol version 6, artificial intelligence, intellectual property right protection, and other topics.